This video is going to introduce you to the new City of Vancouver ventilation checklists. The City of Vancouver has adopted the greater part of the TECA ventilation checklist as well as the TECA HRV checklists. These have all been amalgamated into one Excel sheet uh, and this has two checklists. The first one is design and installation and the second one is commissioning and balancing. And so if you've been using the TECA checklist, you know first of all about the ventilation checklist. That has been around for years. TECA also has developed these HRV checklists. There is design and installation and commissioning and balancing. And all of these have been amalgamated in the new City of Vancouver checklist. These are applicable, of course, only to the City of Vancouver. And so, as I said, on this Excel sheet, you're going to find the design and installation checklist can be filled out digitally. Uh, you'll also, you're also going to find the ventilation commissioning and balancing checklist. These checklists are going to be required by the City of Vancouver in January 2022. These are optional to use up until that time. At the pre-drywall inspection, there's going to be the design and installation checklist and that's that has to be submitted to the building inspector. At the final stage, um, the commissioning and balancing checklist is going to be inspected by the building inspector. And so any ventilation system as of January 22 going into City of Vancouver dwellings requires an HRV. City of Vancouver is unique in this way. As of January 22, it will no longer permit other ventilation systems in any building type. This includes laneway homes. This includes secondary suites. This includes single family dwellings. HRVs will be required in every dwelling unit and a checklist must be submitted for every dwelling unit. If one HRV serves multiple dwelling units, one checklist will be required. If multiple HRVs serve multiple dwelling units, a ventilation checklist will be required for each one. New buildings will always require a ventilation checklist. This is, as I said, at the pre-drywall stage and at the final stage. Existing homes typically will not need these checklists submitted unless it's a full gut project and a reinstallation of a mechanical system in its entirety. If all you're doing is replacing something like a bath fan, you do not need to submit these checklists. First off, we are going to show you how to find the checklists. So I'm going to open up the internet here and I'm going to show you how to get to them online so you should follow along. Um, energy for Homes Vancouver. Type that into Google. After you get through all of the ads, you're going to see this link here from the City of Vancouver. Click on this. Energy requirements for new homes. Now that we're on this page, we're going to go down to the heat recovery ventilators section. So scroll all the way down to near the bottom. You can see heat recovery ventilators is here. Next, we're going to click on Vancouver Heat Recovery Ventilator Checklists. So it's downloading it right here. I'm gonna, I, I could drag this over to my desktop. You should drag it over to maybe a folder that you want to save it in. But if we open it up, here's what it looks like. And so just so we can talk in the correct lingo here, the checklists are an Excel workbook. So this, this whole thing is an Excel workbook these tabs along the bottom are worksheets. So one workbook, multiple worksheets. The two main worksheets here are, first of all, the design and installation and the commissioning and balancing. Those are the two that you're actually going to fill out and submit. Duct sizing, reference tables, reference drawings. These are supplemental information to help you complete the checklists. First of all, when you open this checklist and you're getting, to, getting ready to use it, you want to click Enable Editing. This enables the functionality of the worksheet. It also allows you to type into all of these cells. I'm going to zoom out here and I'll just show you in general what they look like. So you might not be able to read everything. That's okay. I just want to show you how they're organized. 
design and installation. Um, so yeah, ventilation, design and installation. It's multiple pages. Lots of it is input with text. For example, project address might be 123 Delmont Ave, for example. There are also drop down boxes where you should choose options from. There's also lots of check boxes that you should choose. Once you complete the sheet, you should print it. You can press Control P or you can press File Print. So if I was printing to PDF, I could click that or I could print it on an actual hard copy printer. And there are four pages that come out of this. Remember, this is still design and installation. Next up is commissioning and balancing. It's a much shorter checklist. I believe it's only one or two pages. Yeah, actually just one page, uh, not even front and back. And so this is the, the guts of the whole thing right here. Let's go through the design and installation checklist. Uh, we're going to go through pretty briefly. I'm not going to describe uh, the process. I'm not going to give you education on the background. As I said, you're going to need to submit this checklist at the pre-drywall stage to the building inspector. In order to submit this checklist, you're going to have to stamp it. That's what goes right here in the stamp section. In order to be able to stamp it, you require the TECA HRV stamp or an equivalent from a recognized training authority. As you may or may not know, the TECA HRV course has a prerequisite, which is the TECA ventilation course. So in order to complete and stamp these checklists, an installer must have completed the TECA ventilation course and the TECA HRV course. Once they have this stamp, the HRV stamp, they're going to use that right here. So first of all, the project information is very self-explanatory. This workbook is protected, but it's not password protected. If you want to drag in a digital stamp here, you should first click review, unprotect sheet. Next, you're going to want to open up one of the, uh, uh, sorry, the photo of your stamp or the image of your stamp. This is mine. So I'm going to click copy. If I go back to here, I click in here and I press paste. can resize it and drag it in there like that. I could protect the sheet again if I like, just click OK, leave it uh, without a password. Now every future copy of the checklist that I make will have this stamp in it. Select the building type and select the ventilation system. I'm not going to go through all these options, but remember as I said in January 2022 all dwelling units are going to require an HRV. So. You can choose single family dwelling, you can choose single family dwelling with a suite. There's laneway house down here or an entire multi-unit building. And then you can select your options here. For almost every single project that you submit, especially after January 22, you're going to choose either a combined HRV ERV system or an independent HRV ERV system. I'm not going to go through the differences of these two as this is explained in the TECA courses. Building characteristics. As I said, if you have a legal suite in a home and the suite is all the suite and the dwelling unit are both served by the HRV, you only require one of these checklists to be submitted. It's one ventilation system, one checklist. If you have different HRVs serving each unit, then you need to submit a checklist for each ventilation system. So if I have one HRV in my main dwelling and one HRV in my legal suite, I should submit one of these for my main dwelling and one of these for my legal suite. All these check boxes here describe what type of project you have. Primary dwelling, you enter the floor area, volume, number of floors, bedrooms, etc. You also enter some information that's relevant to backdrafting, naturally aspirating fuel fired vented appliances if they're present, if um, backdrafting is a risk. From this you get the required ventilation system airflow, you enter it here. The appliance selection section is very similar to it is in the TECA HRV checklists. You enter in the make and model, the location, the airflow, static pressure, the SRE. One addition on the City of Vancouver checklists is that they're very explanatory about booster ventilation. If you have an HRV configured 
to run at multiple airflow speeds depending on if people activate bathroom fans for example booster ventilation system is considered and actually written down here the ventilation ductwork system is sized based on the booster ventilation system flow rate which makes sense because all the ductwork in the home should be able to carry the maximum airflow rate so you're going to find lots that refers to booster ventilation that's what we're talking about here principal ventilation system you go through some options of the overall system and then you break it down into room by room. One thing I want to show you, apart from having check boxes, apart from having option buttons where you click one or the other, apart from having text where you enter in numbers or, or words even, we also have these little red triangles. These are comments that we've added to help you understand what's going on. On the first time through this checklist, I strongly recommend that you read through all of it, every checkbox, every option, and hover over every red triangle, uh, every cell that has a red triangle, and read through the comment. This will help you understand what the inputs should be for each section. I'm not going to read through all these bullet points. I recommend you do this on your first time through. Lots of it is code requirements for the overall ventilation system, the flow rates to each room, um, individual considerations for things like bathrooms. One thing I want to make note of here is that this table is for the principal ventilation system. This is for your HRV, including HRV located in bathrooms. If you have uh, individual bathroom fans and kitchen fans, that's taken care of in a section down below. There is an entire duct sizing section here. Um, this duct sizing procedure is fairly mathematical and I'm not going to go through it right now. It is discussed in detail in the Tekka HRV course and people are tested on it in the exam. You should have an understanding of this before using these checklists. If you need help in any of this, you can click on the duct sizing page. It has step-by-step -step instructions for how to size your ductwork, how to calculate the different variables such as the effective length. Once you go through all of this, uh, there's also little calculator tools that you can use to help you through this, and even a duct sizing table that can help you. This part is not required to be submitted to the building inspector. This is just for your own best practice. You enter in, for example, the section, the airflow, the minimum diameter, and the selected duct size. All you should tell the building inspector, one of the check boxes here, actually two of them, all principal ventilation exhaust ductwork sized by appropriate standards. That's what we're referring to, that you follow this mathematical process as well as what's over here and you size it accordingly. The building inspector is going to trust if you check these boxes that you've done it correctly. Section 9 is intermittent bathroom and kitchen ventilation. These have different requirements. There are individual uh, building code tables, Vancouver building bylaw tables, that govern the minimum duct size for these. So if you go to reference tables, you're going to see right here the Vancouver building bylaw tables in imperial and metric. This is for required uh, airflow depending on your building size and number of bedrooms. We also have airflow rates in kitchen and bathrooms. This table should be completed as well. And then similar to above, all bathrooms have sufficient exhaust, all kitchens have sufficient exhaust. There's a section for heated crawl space ventilation. There's also a section for installation of ductwork. This includes insulation, uh, R value, vapor barrier, etc. You can find handy reference drawings over here for uh, installation requirements. Reference drawing one and reference drawing two deal with insulation in uh, unconditioned spaces, crawl spaces, uh, fire protection, etc. Fire and sound separation, go through each of these checkboxes. Last up is protection against depressurization. This is what was discussed earlier on. Um, this is only applicable if you have a risk of backdrafting. If not, you just skip this section. You'd click no over here and skip this section. That's the end of the design and installation checklists. Once again, you can press Control P to print. You can print them in hard copy and stamp them with your actual ink stamp, or you can drag a digital copy of your stamp over here 
and print them as a PDF or as a hard copy. Next up, the commission, commissioning and balancing checklist. The City of Vancouver has adopted the commissioning and balancing procedure developed by TECA. It's a very important part of installing any HRV system that appropriate airflow is getting to and from all zones. HRVs play a crucial role in providing fresh air to occupants as well as exhausting moisture and contaminants. Common misconception of an HRV is that the purpose of an HRV is for recovering heat energy because it's in the name, heat recovery ventilator. This is not true. Heat recovery ventilators are a fresh air system. They're for providing fresh air to occupants of the building and for exhausting moisture, contaminants, etc. Also, HRVs save on energy. That is not, however, their main function. I like to remind anyone installing and balancing commissioning an HRV that this, that this is as important as a health and safety issue. Inadequate ventilation uh, can also be a silent problem. It's much different from inadequate heating because inadequate heating is going to result in a phone call right away and correction of the system. Inadequate ventilation is going to result in lack of fresh air to the building or excess moisture buildup. These problems are going to accumulate over time. That's why the City of Vancouver has adopted this fairly strict commissioning and balancing policy. So similar to the other checklist, project information should be filled out, the certification stamp should be filled out. Prepare for balancing by confirming all of these steps. This is how you prepare the building. Balance the appliance first and balance the branches second. Again, this checklist is very similar to the TECA checklist, so once you've taken the course, you should be quite comfortable with filling it out. Lastly, we confirm again some of the main bullet points of all this. Uh, air, airflow supply provided to every floor, every bedroom. Airflow in each branch measured to within plus or minus 5 CFM of design airflow. Copy of this checklist and HRV manual is left with the HRV system or homeowner documentation package. Once this has been filled out, you should print it off uh, as a PDF or a hard copy and again submit it to the building inspector at final. This is also a very incentivizing thing for builders or developers or contractors to provide to their clients. Homeowners like to know that the ventilation system in their building has been calibrated and it is accurate and that they are getting fresh air to all the zones that need fresh air. This has been a quick overview of the new City of Vancouver checklists. We showed you what they are. We're told, you've, we've told you when they're due, right? They're due January 22. That's when they're gonna become mandatory. The design and installation checklist needs to be submitted at pre-drywall. And the commissioning and balancing checklists needs to be submitted at final. Both of these checklists are getting submitted to the building inspector. The way these checklists work is that they go through all of the requirements and it is the responsibility of the installer to confirm that the system has been installed according to protocol. The inspector is not going to go through each of the bullet points and confirm this on their own. They're going to take your word for it. The checklists can be found online. Once you save a copy to your desktop or to your folder structure, uh, you can kind of copy and paste from there. Thank you for watching and we encourage you to begin using these checklists and this new protocol before January 2022 when it becomes mandatory.